Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, I just, everyone has been so inspiring tonight. I just wanted to come out here and be with this amazing audience. You guys are awesome. Well, yeah. Pander. Um, so uh, I'm Jessica Holmes, and uh, just a bit about myself. Um, I was on Royal Canadian Air Force, and I was the first new cast member added since its inception, and the only cast member with their original teeth. Um, <laughs> It always fell on my shoulders uh, to play all of the young white women roles on the show. So Britney Spears and Michael Jackson. Um, <laughs> but uh, more about me, I'm training for a 1K. Um, I, uh, I feel like you should, you should set achievable goals, is what the experts say. And so I'm just... And I, I'm not going to rush it. I just had a baby eight years ago, so, you know, chill out. Chill out, people. You see the moms jogging with, with a little newborn, and I'm just like, oh my god, I still put on my workout clothes and then just sit down and watch TV in them. So, my morning beauty routine is this. And then your face smells like morning breath for the rest of the day. I don't know if anyone's... Um, but it's, I, I do find it tough because as a performer, it's, you know, I want to feel confident when I'm on stage and I, I want to be cast in roles and it's harder as you age to, as a woman to, to get still cast in roles. And I mean, I have found there is so much pressure to get work done. I, and even the dermatologists are in on it. I've been to the dermatologist and said, hi, I have this mole. And he's like, and you have that face. <laughs> so there's, there's pressure, but so many people get so much done, even... The Kardashians, poor Kim Kardashian was robbed the other day, and apparently uh, on TMZ they said it was terrible because when she was trying to describe what happened to the police, they couldn't even get it because she was like, oh my God, I was robbed and I was so scared. I was like... <laughs> and they couldn't... I have a deaf friend who can't lip read what they're saying. They've just gone too far. And I don't like it when people say, I've never had anything done. <laughs> I've never had anything done. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, right, you never had anything done, and I never pee in the shower at the gym. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, it's only natural, and the truth is, I actually, I have two children. I uh, have had two kids, they're now eight and nine, and that's why when I wear this dress and I bend to the side, a little bit of skin comes out, because <laughs> that's what happens, that's nature, thank you. Um, my uh, different things happen to us as we age. My daughter, um, so sweet, I was snuggling her uh, one night and, you know, she just reached up and she rubbed my face and said, mmm, your beard is so soft. <laughs> um, and uh, I didn't want to judge. I just wanted to say, well, that's, that's what happens after a woman turns 40 is uh, Mother Nature makes her face like a chia pet. <laughs> it's just because of the circle of life. So it's a very beautiful thing. Thank you for telling mommy how soft she is. Um, but I choose to view everything as a bit of a joke. I find that I'm looking for the funny in all situations. And um, when I was uh, 19, I went backpacking through Europe. And a lot of cool kids do that. Not all kids uh, bring their grandpa, but I did. <laughs> And so it was so gross. Sometimes people would wink at me and be like, hey, he sure got lucky. And I was like, Ugh, he's my grandpa. Um, it's not like he was Donald Trump or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> when that fetus comes out, I'll be hitting on it. Sorry. Anyway, is there, honestly, there's nothing else he can say at this point. There's nothing else he could say. I shed in a bowl and ate it this morning. And people would still be like, Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, like, people are either going to vote for him or not vote for him. Anyway, so uh, looking for the... Um, but I thank him for lighting me his spray tan for tonight's show. It means a lot. Um, but I do look for the funny, and part of it is when I was on this trip with my grandpa, we were staying in the cheapest places, and one... It, it got disheartening how cheap it was. Um, and we were doing it all to save money, because I was like, whatever money I have saved over in the stupid money pouch is going to be how I go to university. And I was really, really excited uh, to just scrimp and save and eat cheese that doesn't need to be refrigerated and buy day-old bread. But one night, my grandpa and I were walking down this street, 
and uh, we were in Paris, and it was late at night, and there wasn't anyone else around. And a car pulled over, and in an accent that I still, to this day, can't place, a man said, uh, quickly, come over to the car, please, please, to, to come here. Uh, I just need directions. And we're like, oh, sorry, we're Canadian. And he's like, no, no, uh, pl please, quickly, to come over. Uh, look over here, I'm not robbing you, but give me your wallet, please. <laughs> and... We were like, no, we're Canadian, I'm not giving you a wallet, it was going to be in Paris with my grandpa. And he was like, no, no, please, to give me your wallet. Look, I have something here, it's an exchange of goods, it's not a robbing, give it to me. And my grandfather, who was wearing both our fanny packs, because he didn't mind not looking cool, uh, handed them over. And the guy took all the money out, thank God he left our passports, but then he took the money, threw two packages out the window, and drove away saying, I have not robbed you! <laughs> and we... I opened up the packages thinking, let this be something that is worth almost $1,000. I open it up, and it is two little pleather Michael Jackson jackets. These things would not even fit a Cabbage Patch doll. They were so <laughs> stupid. I was so angry. They were red with the stupid black. Anyway, I hear my grandfather wheezing behind me, and I'm like, oh my god, poor grandpa's dying because of this. And I turn and look, and he is bent over laughing. He is laughing <laughs> his head off. And I was like, Grandpa, what the hell are you doing? Are you senile? What is this? What is going on? We just gave away all our money, and all we got for it were the stupid jackets. And he said, Jess, we weren't paying for the jackets. We were paying for the story. And now that I make my life as a comedian, <laughs> I feel like when bad things are happening to me, I go, well, where's the joke? What's the story going to be? What's the punchline going to be for this? And it does end up working out sometimes uh, that the way life goes, you can picture in the worst of it um, that someday you'll be laughing about it. A few years ago, um, I went through something that uh, took away my sense of humor, and uh, I went through depression. And I was in it for about two years. And uh, just to clarify for people, depression is not something where you're just not smiling enough or feeling grateful or just, hmm. It's not something that can be fixed by just having a more positive attitude. I would lay on my sofa day after day, uh, resenting um, healthy foods that promised to prolong my life, resenting my gal Oprah Winfrey, resenting anything that made me, reminded me of just how far I had sunk. And so when I came out of that depression, um, I just wanted to be grateful again, so grateful to find things to laugh about and to know that when I'm up on stage, this isn't fake. I truly am so grateful for every time you laugh. I'm grateful for every time I laugh because I have joy in my life again. And I was reminded of this time um, when my daughter was just born years ago. Uh, my mother was watching me hold her, and I was looking at her thinking, oh my God, I would forgive you anything. You are so beautiful. Everyone else's baby is so ugly. They're so ugly. <laughs> They're like little pink raisins, but I got the only good-looking baby. I love you so much. Anyway, my mother, looking at me, said, can you imagine that I love you as much as you love her? And in the moment, I was like, oh, you're so clingy. Um, <laughs> But then time, time passed, and it was only after I came out of the depression that I thought about that, and I was like, oh my God. You know, we are all someone's baby. Doesn't matter whether our parents are living or dead, if they are, um, did a great job or if they dropped the ball and just sucked so bad. It doesn't matter. We were still born with the potential to have happiness. We were born with the potential to be loved and to go forward. So now when I, when I find myself struggling with um, issues about mental health, or I find myself struggling um, in career or in any area of my life, I remind myself, no, I deserve a higher bar. I have to set the bar higher. And it means so much to me to be able to live in that, in that truth again, to just know that it's worth fighting to live your best life, that you can always reset the bar for yourself and that it is never too late for that. And I'm so grateful because I feel like I have so many more Celine Dion impressions I want to do. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, there, 
there always is a chance to look for the funny in things. Sometimes, though, you have to wait a while before you can laugh about something. You can't just rush it too quickly, um, as is the case with Céline Zion. Um, for example, I want to say to the audience a, a joke. Uh, knock, knock. Not René. Do you see? Sometimes it's too soon to laugh. It's too soon. But I will tell you this, there is always the chance in life to, to make something beautiful of what you have been given. Me, I was not just born the greatest person in the world, no. <laughs> One day I knelt down at the side of the bed and prayed to God to give me the kind of voice that make other people feel very insignificant. <laughs> and in that moment, an angel flew in through the window and farted into my lungs. <laughs> and my nasal rantings was born. Near, far, wherever you are, I believe that the heart does go on.